Hi there, I'm Jeff Messer, President and Owner of Messer Truck Equipment. I want to welcome you to Messer Truck Equipment here on Warren Avenue in Westbrook. Uh, we've been around for 121 years. We were founded in 1899 by my great-grandfather, and actually we'll go up the stairs here in a minute, I'll show you some pictures. But this is our showroom here. Um, this is where we do our part sales, and we also have some of our equipment that we sell on display. So we build uh, work trucks for vocational industries. So the plumbers, electricians, contractors, municipalities, uh, we put together those trucks that you see on job sites. So we're installing um, flatbeds, dump bodies, service bodies. We do snow plows, cranes, sanders. Uh, if it can go on a truck, you know, we can do it. That's, that's what we uh, uh, like to say. Um, let's go upstairs. I'll show you a little bit about the history of the company. So on the right is my great-grandfather, Walter Messer, who started the company in 1899. Um, and then you can see to his left is my grandfather, my father, and then myself. I've been involved in the company since 2003 and took over from my father in 2008. Um, and then here on the wall uh, is just some of the literature pieces of the products that we sell. So it shows the breadth of our products. We do everything from trash trucks uh, to lift gates to get heavy objects in the back of your trucks, cargo vans. We do a lot of van shelving and ladder racks. Uh, we do dump bodies and service bodies in steel, aluminum, and fiberglass. Um, it, uh, it, it's really a whole cornucopia of um, truck equipment and accessories. Um, and like I said, if it goes on a truck, we have access to it and can install it. All right, we're in the shop now. Uh, we wanted to talk about one of the projects we're working on. We can talk about some of the skills necessary to do this. But this is kind of what arrives in our shop is this truck. So the cab, the frame rails, the wheels, um, and that's what we start building on. That's our blank canvas. Uh, this is a subframe hoist that we're welding down to the frame of the truck. And so this is hydraulically operated. This lifts up. There's a hinge point here at the rear. And this is what the body will get welded down to. You can look behind the truck here, and we actually have the body. This is, comes pre-manufactured from the factory. We will then weld that on top of that hoist, and this will actually be able to dump. Uh, so if you have product in the back, uh, stone, mulch, this body would dump to the rear, they could dump their load and then go get more product. Some of the skill sets needed to do this, uh, welding, uh, to be able to get the subframe to stick to the truck frame, to be able to uh, operate a MIG welder, uh, to have hydraulic uh, understanding on how to run the hydraulic lines, and then 12 volt DC, how to tap into the truck's existing battery system uh, to gain power to operate the electric pump that runs the hydraulic system. Uh, we do train on site here, uh, so certainly you don't have to know how to do all that stuff when you get here, but just have an understanding of those, basic understanding of those systems and how they interact together. Uh, we'll move on now to another section of the shop and show you some other jobs over here. This is another product line uh, that we do quite a lot of here at Master Truck Equipment. It's upfitting cargo vans with van shelving. So this van showed up here uh, empty. Uh, all there was was a driver's seat and a passenger seat, and the whole back was completely empty. Uh, this van will probably be going to uh, some sort of vocational trade. It could be a plumber, electrician, has a lot of uh, workspace in here, so the uh, tradesman can put his tools, his equipment, his parts and pieces all in the back here. So we get all this material from a company called Adrian Steel. We then um, install it per the customer's request where they want the drawers, the door units. Um, we, we go over it with the salespeople on exactly where they want the stuff. And then we nut and bolts, uh, tie it all together and bolt it right through the floor and through the walls uh, to create this um, cargo management solution for the customer. This customer in particular uh, also needed a power source. They needed um, 110 volt power to charge their power tools and run some other items. And so we're installing a 3000 watt inverter 
that gets powered off from the van's batteries and we run wires and this will be mounted in one of the cabinets so that they can then have 110 volt power in the van and, and charge all their tooling as well. So some of the skills needed here is obviously a mechanical ability to be able to uh, see some plans on how to put together this van kit, uh, what pieces and parts go where, and then how to install them. Uh, some drilling uh, needs, uh, setting in some threaded fasteners, uh, and then nut and bolting it all together to get it to uh, be fixed here in the back of the van. Some 12 volt electric uh, to install the inverter and wire that properly. Um, I think that's it. They, they, they gotta be able to read and understand directions. Uh, yes, that's and so uh, that's good, thank you, Matt. Uh, we have some instructions from the manufacturer that show exactly how to install these. Um, step by step, it takes you right through. So the ability to read, uh, view pictures, and understand what you're seeing is all helpful. Now we're going to move on to our central gathering area uh, where we have our metrics board. All right, we're in the central meeting area. So every morning at 10, we gather as a company uh, to uh, update each other on what's going on, uh, where we are in our metrics. And we also have our banner here that talks a little bit about our mission, visions, and value as a company. So our mission statement is right there in the center, a world-class team setting the standard for the work truck industry. And then we have our family tree here. So it's rooted in our 121 year history. Uh, the branches talk about being agile in the present. And if we do that, we'll have a flourishing future. And then we also have our core values of fostering integrity, delivering quality, and creating value. And we've really made it core to our uh, company that we want to live those every day and that's why they're here and we talk about it every day so we really do hire on attitude and those people that embrace those values and really make them as part of their daily lives we also have some metrics that we measure um, we have our open orders we have the number of quotes that we've had the previous day we have our total revenue sales um, we look at our accounts receivable and, and how far behind we are there with the money coming in. Um, and we also look at uh, metrics throughout the shop. We have a safety, a quality, a delivery, and an environment metric that we report on every day and we track um, via the calendar. Uh, we also have updates on what's going on um, in the, the work environment. Obviously COVID-19 is uh, has all the headlines here, uh, but if anything needs to put, be put out, it gets uh, put out on this board as well. And then we also have uh, the Messer B attitudes. It's the attitudes that we want people to be. Um, stuff as far as being respectful, being clean, being safe, um, being honest, humble, and just being open and communicative um, is what we expect of all our employees. And so hopefully when COVID-19 is all said and done. We'll be back meeting together as a company, obviously with the six foot separations. Uh, we've gone to a virtual meeting uh, via email uh, to get the word out to our employees. But when this is all done, we'll be back meeting together uh, as a big family. So we'll go on, on to another uh, work bay and show you another job in progress. So this is a body that's manufactured by Napide. Uh, one of our larger uh, vendors and suppliers. Um, it's what's called a gooseneck body or a, a hauling body. Um, some skills needed to set this down. You need to be able to accurately read a tape measure and figure out the length of the frame and how the body's gonna sit on the chassis. Um, and there's obviously guidance given in, in, in installation instructions. Uh, but then there's also some 12 volt DC electric needs to tap into the marker lights, uh, to tie the truck's electrical system into the body's wiring harness, uh, so that's operating properly. And then also routing the fuel lines that come out through the body so that you can get the fuel into the uh, chassis fuel tank through the body as well. Uh, not a whole lot of welding on this one, but if we rotate over to the bay adjacent to us here, you have an aluminum body that was manufactured by one of our vendors called Alcom, a company here in Maine, 
Uh, that requires some aluminum welding uh, to mount the long sills and mount that to the truck frame. And then there's also some steel welding to weld the hitch onto the rear of the truck. And then uh, another 12 volt DC application to be able to take the body harness um, and tie that into the chassis electrical system, um, identifying what wires go where. They're all color coded. You can see the different colors. You have stop, turn, tail, running lights, brake lights, um, and backup lights. And then the, the ground tied into that as well. So again, having a basic understanding of 12 volt DC is uh, great to know, as well as uh, the ability to weld, read a tape measure, uh, mechanically understand how to uh, fasten that body to the chassis. Um, I think next we're gonna check out our paint department and talk about some of the skills there. We're in our uh, Vortex Bay. So this is our spray-in liner. Uh, you may have heard of uh, Rhino Lining or Linex. Um, it's a uh, coating that goes on the back of truck beds uh, to preserve it, to keep it from getting dented or scratched. Uh, you can see here, uh, we've installed it on a service body and this is done by our painter. Um, it's sprayed on with a couple of different coatings and it has this kind of pebble finish to give it some grip to it. Um, but it will extend the life of these truck bodies and keep them from getting dented, scratched, and corroding over time. So you need the ability to um, set up the machine, uh, proper proportions, um, and then uh, it's just all the spraying technique and how to lay it down. Um, so we do have a, a paint shop here where we mix our own paint and we spray all these bodies that are being installed um, in our shop. And the next step I'm going to show you our 60 foot paint booth and talk about some of the uh, tasks that are done there. All right, so we're in our paint space here. Uh, like I said before, we paint the majority of bodies that are installed in our shop. Uh, we have a 60 foot cross draft paint booth here that's all well lit. Um, don't have a job in here right now, uh, but this is where the jobs would come. Um, we would shoot them to match typically the cab color. Um, so we need the ability to uh, select the right paint and match it um, and also prep it properly. So sand it and then mask it. And we actually have a job here in one of our other painting bays. This is a lift gate that we installed and we're painting out the black trim uh, to match the truck body. And so you can see it's all masked uh, with paper and tape. Um, and then you've got to properly treat the surfaces so it gets sanded and they're primed. And then we shoot paint over that. And so uh, some skill sets there is obviously the, the proper preparation, making sure the surface is ready to accept paint and then mixing the paint in the proper proportions, understanding the math behind that, um, and then uh, learning the skills to actually apply that paint and to blow it on, um, let it dry, and then remove all your paper and deliver it to the customer. All right, we're up in our uh, outdoor inventory area. We have four fiberglass service bodies that we've custom fabricated these racks on to the customer specs. So over time, uh, we've built a spec for the customer that meets their needs and, and what they need to do their jobs each day. Um, we've translated that into some building plans, given it to our, our shop technicians, and they've welded and fabricated uh, these racks that are installed on these bodies. Uh, we're awaiting the trucks to come from the manufacturer. I believe these are General Motors trucks. Uh, once those are produced, these bodies will get mounted. There's lift gates that go on the back, and then they're delivered to the customer. Um, we can rotate around and you can see some of the inventory we have. We've got service bodies uh, that are waiting to be installed on truck chassis. We have stainless steel dump bodies uh, as well as regular carbon steel bodies that are all primed black and ready to be installed. Uh, van bodies, truck caps. Um, it kind of shows the breadth of all the product that we have uh, that's ready to install here. We are here in the warehouse. Uh, this is where we hold most of our inventory that's getting installed in the shop. Uh, this particular area is all the Adrian Steel product. You saw that being installed earlier in the cargo van. Um, a lot of stuff gets moved by fork truck, you can see in the back here. Uh, 
one of the skill sets needed in the warehouse is the ability to operate the fork truck to be able to offload product out of the trailers, bring it into the warehouse, sort it, and then pick it and bring it out to the shop. Um, we do uh, do fork truck training um, off-site. Uh, we have a trainer on staff as well, so you can get your fork truck certification. Uh, we're gonna move this way, and you can see there's a lot of inventory. Uh, these cardboard boxes all house partitions and shelving and bins and parts and pieces that get assembled uh, to finish product that you see out in the shop. Uh, here's Riley. Just, Hi, how are you? stepping into his uh, workspace uh, so he's our uh, warehouse coordinator he is doing a lot of shipping and receiving so he's accepting this product receiving it in he's sorting it making sure it's going to the right product the right bins um, as well as shipping stuff out as it's sold uh, so he has to be meticulous in his details make sure that he has all of the uh, information that he needs um, he's working through our inventory software which is QuickBooks uh, so he has to have an understanding of that um, the ability to use Microsoft Office and be able to send emails and communicate via that um, are all some of the basic skill sets that he would need to do that job um, really the, the lifeblood of the company though is to get those parts and pieces uh, from here out into the shop so that they can do their work because we want them working um, on the shop floor not being running around looking for parts and pieces. That's Riley's job. So. <laughs> I would also add too when it comes to that particular job, if it's parts or if it's inventory or something like that, there's a personality. There's a customer service component too because Riley has to build relationships with all of our vendors and have working relationships so that we can help each other when we need it. Absolutely. I think it goes back to the company culture piece. The piece we saw there in the central huddle area is uh, emulating those values that we have as a company and being part of that culture. Um, certainly if you don't uh, have those values and um, kind of reject that, then you're not gonna work in the company culture and uh, it's gonna be tough to come to work every day because it's just not gonna be a good fit. So we really are looking for people that are uh, tied to that piece about the integrity, the quality, and the value that you bring to the team and that you wanna be part of a team player, uh, or be a team player, be part of a team, be part of this family. We are a family business. Uh, my name is on the building and have a long family history, so we're looking for people to come be part of the Messer family.